Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing this budget drawing tablet called the Frunzi Rubens Tab T11 Pro. And this is running on Android 12. It comes with 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. This is a 10 inch IPS LCD and it comes with a pen that supports pressure, tilt and palm rejection. So this is actually a review unit provided by the company and the price of this tablet at the time of review is 219 US dollars on Amazon USA and in this video I will just present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this is good enough for drawing. Alright, let me give you the bottom line up front. The general performance of this tablet is satisfactory for a budget tablet at this price point. Now this is a budget tablet so don't expect to play graphics intensive games on it. The performance is definitely adequate for web browsing, watching videos, drawing, checking social media, emails. As for drawing performance, I would say the tablet and pen is good enough for casual drawing but not for creating professional art because the slow diagonal lines are affected by wobble and jitter. So this tablet is just good enough for casual users and those with a limited budget for beginners and for maybe teenagers who don't have very strict expectations on the drawing performance. I mean, it works fine as a digital sketch pad or as your first foray into digital art but you will really have to know the limitations of this pen in order to work around them. Now, if you want better drawing experience at the same price, the other option would be to get pen displays that you have to connect to your computer. So one of the main selling points with this Frunzi Rubens tab is it's portable because there is a built-in battery and this runs on Android. The battery life is about five to seven hours depending on the brightness and that is all right. Let's look at the items included with the purchase. There's the after sales card with the email address for customer service, the user manual. This is a USB-C to USB-A charging cable, USB-A power adapter, one AAAA battery for the pen, the pen, this is a brush. This is for cleaning the dust of the tablet, I guess. That's the seam ejection tool. Three replacement pen nibs and the nib remover. There's a microfiber cleaning cloth, two normal gloves, and one artist glove. And there's the case and the tablet. The texture on the case does not look appealing to me. And that's the pen holder. So this case does provide full protection for the tablet. However, I prefer to use the tablet without the case since I'm using the tablet mostly at home. If you have to bring the tablet out, maybe you can use the case. I don't like to use this case because it makes the tablet much thicker and heavier. The cover of the case can close with magnets, but as you can see, there is no automatic wake and sleep feature. So let's look at the different deployment angles you can get with this tablet. So this is the low angle. There are actually grooves here, five grooves that you can use with this stand and there are magnets. So this is not going to slide out. And if you press down, this is quite stable. So this is the second position, the third, fourth and the fifth, which is not 90 degrees it's still at an angle and this tablet case has a frame for the display there are cutouts for the camera in front and behind and cutouts for the ports and speakers by the side design of this tablet looks all right the bezels are quite thick there is a two megapixel camera in front and this tablet comes with a screen protector that's already applied and you can see it's quite reflective the tablet is quite Thin. I don't know the exact weight, but for a 10 inch tablet, this is the weight I would expect. It's not heavy. The back is matte textured and it's quite susceptible to fingerprint smudges. And that's a 5 megapixel camera. On the left side of the tablet, there is the micro SD card slot, 
3.5 millimeter audio jack, micro HDMI port, USB-C for charging and data transfer with USB 2 speeds, a speaker, volume control buttons and the power button. On the other side there is just this speaker. This speaker is not powerful so the audio quality lacks bass, volume and it sounds slightly hollow. This tablet is made with plastic and glass and build quality is quite solid with minimal flex. The display is a 10 inch IPS LCD and resolution is 1920 by 1200 and on a 10 inch display the visuals look sharp with no pixelation when looking at it from one arm's length away. Now the colors look alright but definitely not as good compared to other more expensive tablets and the color is affected by viewing the viewing angle so you can see from the side the colors appear washed out let's take a look at some photos the colors look all right as long as you are viewing the tablet from the front i definitely don't have any complaints for this display at the price point that this tablet is selling at. The display is not laminated so there is a gap between the line and the pen tip. The gap creates parallax and that can affect drawing. More specifically it can make it more difficult to join lines properly. However on a small display parallax usually isn't a problem. So let me try and join the lines as properly as I can. And usually when there is noticeable parallax um, when drawing lines there can be gaps or the lines can overshoot like this. So you have to bear in mind this limitation when it comes to drawing. Oh look there is a gap here. If you are looking at a tablet from an angle while drawing parallax can be an issue. If you are looking at the tablet straight on while drawing parallax is mostly a non-issue. This is the pen that's included. The build quality is solid because this is full metal. The surface texture is matte, so this is quite comfortable to hold. There is a clip, there are no buttons on the side, no button at the back. And if you unscrew this, you can replace the AA, AA battery that the pen is using. The pen nib goes in and out slightly. So the pen nib is not completely Firm, which some people prefer but I personally don't have any issues with that slight movement. This pen supports pressure sensitivity but there is no mention on the number of levels of pressure you can get and as you have seen there is latency as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. When it comes to drawing latency is not really an issue because chances are you're not going to be drawing long sweeping lines while drawing. This pen has pressure but there is no tilt so you can't tilt the pen at the low angle to get those very broad strokes. Palm rejection works really well so you can have your palm on the display and write and draw and you will not be able to introduce any straight strokes. The pen nib is made with plastic and it's quite smooth on this display so it's gonna take some time to get used to drawing on such a smooth surface. Let's test the pen performance and the app that I'm using is Medibank Paint Pro. Initial activation force is surprisingly quite low so I can draw thin lines rather easily even with a thick brush selected. Strokes are able to taper smoothly and sharply. Dots can be drawn by tapping the pen on the display. Let's see if the pen can produce lines with consistent width by applying consistent pressure and it does quite well. And this is the diagonal line test and unfortunately you can see diagonal lines that are drawn slowly will have the noticeable wobble and jitter. So this is obviously going to affect drawing performance. This is going to affect accuracy. 
if you draw vertical lines or horizontal lines you can get straight lines but if you draw diagonal lines you're going to get wobbly lines to get straight diagonal lines you have to draw faster but the thing is sometimes you want to draw a bit slower because you want more accuracy however when you slow down to draw that's where you will get the wobbly diagonal lines the line transition from thin to thick is quite smooth and this is also a diagonal line so there is also the diagonal line wobble here let's talk about the drawing experience while drawing and the app that i'm using is infinite painter and this scene is just a car parked on a street i like to draw cars when testing tablets and the drawing performance because there are straight lines there are diagonal lines and there are curves so drawing those lines will really test the pen so let me just reduce the opacity for this scene for the drafting lines first the brush that i'm using is manga inker and notice as i draw this curve there is the wobbly line so i'm going to change the settings for this to increase the smooth maybe up to 10 percent to try to smooth out the lines okay so let's try again to draw this curve and you can still see the wobbliness or the jitter so this is the limitation and if you know the limitation you can sort of work around it by drawing faster yeah so if you draw faster the lines are going to be smoother so what this tells me is this tablet can be good for quick sketching but the thing is sometimes you want to slow down because you want to draw more accurately and you can't slow down because if you slow down to draw those lines you are going to get those wobbly lines so when i draw all these lines right now you can see i'm drawing pretty fast and the lines are quite straight quite fluid i'm holding the pen at an angle and let me try and draw this wheel okay it looks all right it looks all right let's draw this diagonal line oops i did not connect the line properly let me try again by the way there is a cursor on the display which you probably cannot see so you can use the cursor to connect the lines properly so let's draw this straight line yeah. so if you slow down again you will see the line will not be perfectly straight so if you want that smooth line you will have to draw faster i'm not sure if you can hear it but it's raining very heavily outside right now so notice i'm using double finger to undo so depending on the app you do there may or may not be those finger gesture shortcuts and infinite painter has double finger to undo it will take some time to get used to how smooth the pen tip is on the surface because it is quite smooth and sometimes you can feel the pen tip just gliding away and because i increased the smoothness of the pen so now the lines are straighter but it also increases the latency so notice as I draw this circle, the line will try to catch up with the pen tip. See that? And it's all right because, I mean, there is going to be latency when drawing no matter what. It's just that here there is a bit more latency due to the increased smooth factor. Let's maybe reduce the smoothness down to zero and draw it and see what happens okay yeah the circle is not circular enough yeah i do feel like i need that smoothness and notice i had to tap a few times to get it undo so it seems like the app is not reading my finger gestures properly 
I definitely need to increase the smoothness to 10%. That really helps smooth out the lines. Yep, it helps a lot, it helps so much. And I can use this to draw the lines as well. Now this is just a quick sketch. It's a very loose and sketchy sketch. If you are a professional, I would recommend you get a professional tool. This pen is not accurate enough for professional work. Even if you know the limitations and work around the limitations. Let's have some texture on the wheel. Drawing this is still quite manageable, but you really have to draw a bit faster to get those smooth lines because once you slow down, you can see the line will start to wobble. So if you like to draw fast, then yep, um, this could be a tablet you can consider. Anyway, this tablet is meant for beginners and for, I would say, teenagers, uh, youngsters who are already going to be very happy to get a tablet so they are not going to be too bothered about how straight the lines are. Okay, that's pretty smooth. Um, let's draw the side the lines. Now the initial activation force is low enough so this is how thick the brush is and I can use less pressure to get those thinner lines. Now certain apps will perform better when it comes to drawing with this tablet and certain apps will be a bit more challenging to draw with. As long as you choose the right pen and uh, choose the correct settings, you can actually overcome some of the limitations, uh, more specifically the wobbly lines. So let's write the name here. Okay, the, the words came out looking all right. So here I'm drawing with the thin lines. Actually, at this stage, I can probably turn off the drafting uh, lines, the blue lines. So let's add some quick colors. For the background, I'm just going to use this debris view. Okay, this sketch is almost done. So as the line art was drawn rather quickly, I was able to draw the lines quite smoothly without the wobble or the jitter. So this looks good enough for a quick sketch. Let's look at another drawing that I drew. So that's my daughter, Tiffany. So again, I drew this sketch rather quickly. So the lines are actually quite smooth, even though there are many diagonal lines here. And there is no how should I say, unpredictable variance with the thickness, so the lines are actually quite smooth. Here's another car sketch, and this was drawn with the app concepts. Let's turn off the colors and the textures and look at the line art. So for this app, I had difficulty drawing the smooth lines. You can see the lines here, they are kind of wobbly. If you zoom out like this, it looks okay, but if you zoom in, you can really see the wobbly lines affect the drawing. So certain apps can be a bit more challenging to use, but again, you can apply smoothing to the lines at the expense of adding more latency. Now this sketch looks okay if you don't scrutinize it. All right, to conclude, the general performance of this tablet is satisfactory for a budget tablet at this price point. The drawing performance of the tablet and the pen is affected by the wobble and the jitter with the slow diagonal lines. But as you can see, it can still be used for drawing. It's just that you will need to know the limitations in order to work around the limitations. So due to the drawing performance, this is not a tablet for professional users, for professional artists, but for casual users, for beginners, for those with a limited budget, this is still, I would say, alright. But 
that's really up to you to decide. I mean, you can see the performance yourself. The alternative to this at this price point is to get those pen displays that you have to connect to a computer. So the selling point here is this display is big enough, it looks good enough, and this is portable because there is built-in battery and there is an operating system, Android. So whether this is worth your money, you can decide. And if you are interested to get this tablet, the purchase links are in the video description below. I hope this review is useful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.